you very much, Matt, and thank you for uh, you and Arlen putting on a wonderful course, and thank you for everyone hanging around to the uh, last session of the course. Um, by disclosure, we do get, provide um, get institutional research support from DePew, Stryker, and Zimmer. Uh, to start with definitions, so allergy in particular, this is an IgE uh, antibody-mediated uh, response, and so these antibodies bind to the allergen and then trigger receptor on mast cells or basophils to uh, trigger an inflammatory chem chemical release, such as uh, histamines being released from these cells. And this usually happens within seconds to minutes and can be as severe as anaphylaxis. This process in particular does not occur in response to metal implants. This is a type one hypersensitivity reaction. So this in particular does not exist. For type four hypersensitivity, this has been um, well outlined and this is a uh, review article by Jonathan Vidorczyk um, and it kind of has a nice flow chart of how this process happens. So it starts with metal ions coming from the um, orthopedic implants. These bind with a serum protein that make a haptin and antigen presenting cells then present those to T1 helper cells that initiate this inflammatory response through cytokine release, macrophage activation, and then uh, destruction ensues with the various symptoms um, as noted on the bottom of that flow chart. If we look at orthopedic metal composition and compare cobalt chrome in particular to stainless steel, we see a less than 1% um, of cobalt chrome is made up of this nickel um, component versus stainless steel has a much higher percentage. Um, and when this becomes relevant is if you do have a patient that has had prior um, ORIF, plates, screws, um, the likelihood of if they have not had an issue with their um, plates and screws, they'll most likely not have an issue with a cobalt chrome implant as it is such a significantly lower percentage. Um, this is a study out of uh, Washington University, and they looked at their questionnaires for um, screening patients that were coming in, and they added a metal allergy question to their standardized questionnaire in about 2010, and they found that when they added that question, they found a double a number of patients reporting a metal allergy. Uh, when they looked at the outcomes of these patients, their total hips, they found no difference in functional scores, but these patients did have a significantly lower mental health score versus total knees. They found that these specific patients had lower knee society scores, more symptoms, and a lower satisfaction overall. Our group looked at this as well, and they looked at skin patch testing and how it relates to patient outcomes. So we had 161 patients that were patch tested, 56 of these were positive. And when we looked at a comparative group of 17 that received hypoallergenic implants and 39 that received non-hypoallergenic implants, there were no difference, post-operative pain, complications or reoperation or revision at a median follow-up. And so we determined from this study that skin's patch, skin patch testing has little practical value in these patients. Uh, now moving on to a different type of testing, lymphocyte transformation test, or LTT. Uh, this is a test where they draw the patient's blood and then they um, insult the blood with various uh, antigens to see how they respond. And this potentially leads to the conclusion that the patient has had a previous in vivo reaction to this uh, and been sensitized in a type 4 hypersensitization uh, manner. This is the uh, company that does this testing listed below. Uh, there have been studies looking at the LTT test. Um, Ed McPherson's group looked at this and um, evaluated 27 patients with primary uh, painful total knees that underwent revision. They evaluated them preoperatively with LTT testing and found a fairly even split between mild, moderate, and severe reactions to nickel in these patients. And then they had their pathologist evaluate the tissue at the time of revision and score them using the ALVAL scoring system and found no correlation to LTT and probably even more importantly, no correlation with outcomes to the LTT test or the ALVAL scoring system in these patients. Um, and then moving on to rashes, some patients associate this with as a reaction to their implants. Uh, this is a um, study out of a, a dermatologic journal, but they looked at 30 total knees with rashes and found that 100% of rashes were lateral to the incision, which is likely a neurogenic cause. The uh, 15 patients of this group were uh, patch tested and approximately half of them had a positive patch test, either nickel, cobalt, or chrome. Um, these patients were all treated with topical steroids. All rashes resolved within two weeks, and none of them had long-term outcomes. I would employ you that these are probably the only hypoallergenic implants or joints that exist, uh, but there are some on the market. Um, so specifically, ceramic, titanium, oxidized zirconium, and coated implants. In particular, uh, I would be concerned about titanium as a bearing surface with its wear characteristics. 
Um, so in summary, my personal uh, preference and recommendations would be preoperatively, not routinely asking patients questions, as studies have shown that they're um, likely not going to change your management or outcomes of these patients. Um, no routine hypersensitive uh, hypersensitivity testing um, is performed, and for patients who offer up the history of metal allergy, a surgeon can, on a case-by-case -case basis, consider alternative implant usage. Postoperatively, for rashes in particular, I'd recommend treating with a topical corticosteroid, as these uh, likely are all, or majority of them are neurogenic. And then, most importantly, ruling out infection or other mechanical causes of failure is probably most important, and these are um, much more likely as the patient's source of pain. Thank you very much.